Hi, uh, my name is Moshe Zadka, and today I'm going to talk to you about mocking patterns, um, how to use mocks in Python really well. Um, mocks are used in tests. Um, to illustrate testing, we need to have something to test. Um, and the something we're going to test right now is this little caricature of a network function. Um, think about it as a, you know, maybe a caricature of an HTTP downloader, right? Because it has all the right bits, but it's very, very minimal so that I can um, focus on the test. So this is a copy chunk. It takes a socket-like object and a file-like object, and it reads from the socket. It checks that the chunk is correctly formatted, and then it writes the chunk to the file-like object. And if it's not, it raises a value. Um, again, you know, very simplistic, but it does have all the parts of something that um, that that we, we will want to test, including the fact that it expects a socket object and a file object that we are often things that you will want to avoid because creating a socket with the right option, creating a file like object with the right option is sometimes annoying and unnecessary, and it's much more reliable to just do it or everything in memory. So this is a classic example of like, why would you want to mock? Um, so here's how a test might look like. And because I'm not using like a real testing framework, because I did not want to go through the trouble of integrating a real testing like framework, um, I wrote like a little bit of a minimal, minimal test harness, it just runs a function and uh, um, shows you what exception it got. Uh, so this just, you know, is like a, uh, a little bit of a unit test framework that just will help us uh, work. And this is like the typical structure of, um, of a test, right? Like you, you kind of create the stuff that you need, and then you copy the chunk from a socket to the file object. And as we expected, we got a value here, magic mock name, mock.resev, and with ID. And you notice that we had two mock objects, so the only way we can guess it's a right exception is that we see resev and we can guess that it's something related to the socket. Um, it would be nice if you could make sure that it's actually the socket, right? And if, again, imagine in a real test you might have many mock objects and that's going to be very hard to kind of make an informed guess. Um, so the first pattern I want to show you is naming your mocks. And that's something that's very easy to do very diligently. And um, let's see how it changes the, um, the, the output. So now we can see that it's the socket recev, right? And we know that it actually got the recev and did not like that. So this is already much easier to debug. And again, remember that test by definition will run on like the buggiest version of your code because they will find the problems and you will fix them before you you know, before you even check in sometimes, right? You, you, you run the unit test. So um, they run on very, very, very bad versions of your code. It's good if the um, output from problems like exception is more readable. Here, you can see socket, right? And if I had multiple sockets, I would maybe name them differently and it's much easier to, to debug the exception here. So that's the, that's the first lesson, naming. Uh, now, the other thing is that you notice that um, um, I have two arguments here, and I could easily make the bug of, you know, in the test, or, you know, perhaps if it's a function calling a function, I could do it some place along the call stack to make them, and, and here, of course, we got, we could see that this is, doesn't make sense, so we would fix it, but um, the problem is that it still got all the way to the uh, checking, uh, because mocks have every method. Um, so one way to avoid mocks having every method uh, is to spec them. So I know that socket is supposed to look like a socket. So I want to tell mock, make it look like a socket. I know that file object is supposed to look like a file. So I'm going to tell uh, um, mock, make it look like a file. And this means that they won't have every single attribute. They only have the attributes they need to emulate whatever spec you give them. And that means if I, again, make the mistake of uh, inverting the arguments. Now I get a very clear mock object has no attribute recipe. It doesn't get the value error, right? In this code, it will fail right in this line. So that's great, right? Failing early when there's a bug is much, much clearer. And again, you know, in real life, that's a bug that, you know, you can easily do and will give you much better feedback in your CI or your local test runner or whatever it is. 
So um, there's a second lesson spec. In real life, I'll notice that you know, even though here I named one in one and spec in the other, in real life I would combine them. I would do the spec and the name here for pedagogical reasons. I want to separate to show the uh, uh, advantages separately. But um, if you take nothing else away from this talk, I would take the lesson always name and spec your mocks. If you can, like enforce it via a linting rule or something, because these tests are not much harder to write. Look, I, you know, had to add this and this. This was not a lot of code, but it gives you much higher quality um, errors. Um, so now let's uh, write like a slightly more interesting thing. And like, let's actually like make sure that we set reserve um, has a return value, right? Um, because that's very useful, right? We actually will want to have a return value. And then we'll get the proper value error. Uh, be hooray, because it, um, um, because it is not compatible with the protocol, right? Remember the protocol was supposed to start with a greater than sign. Well, so now, now that we know how to actually make sure that um, our function um, actually get, you know, works, right? Uh, we, we do want to kind of eventually get um, to the last, um, the, last uh, the, the, the last line in copy chunk, right? We actually want to move past the value error. Well, we know exactly what to do for that, right? We um, just, okay, I, I guess before that, um, uh, let's uh, let, let's make sure that we emulate uh, a broken socket, right? That's very important, right? Like a socket can raise an exception. We want to make sure that we know what the function does in this case. Um, so we do that with side effect. Um, and as you can see this, you know, because we don't have any kind of recovery, right? In Maybe that's good that we don't have recovery. In that case, the test would verify that you're raising the actual exception. If you want to have some recovery, some retry or something like that, you would actually verify that the retry worked. Okay, so now we want to actually succeed. Um, so um, okay, we want to make B, sorry. Um, and, and so now we want to make sure that when we do that, we actually manage to uh, write the, uh, to, to call the um, the file object write method. So let's check. And oh, why didn't it work? Huh. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. Let's uh, try to debug that. Um, so what is B for write? So we need O0 here. And that's a bug in the code that we cut uh, because we were very, very careful to write a good unit test. So now let's um, fix the code. Remove that. And now uh, we know, we, we saw that it's actually called, right? We got this uh, value error uh, with the call count being one. So we know that um, it actually called the function, now that's good that we know that we, we can make sure that we actually got there, uh, but we probably want to know that it actually called it with the right value. Um, so we can also get the call arguments here, um, get it and, and put it in chunk and then see what the chunk is. And we see that it actually got the right chunk. Um, and we can, you know, do other stuff. So. Um, Um, we, we probably would also want to uh, verify that um, we actually called reserve of the chunk um, with the right argument. So we can say um, a dot socket dot reserve dot call args. And then we do something like size quarks. Then we raise the value error. Um, and this didn't work, so do that. Okay, chunk. Yep, so it was the right chunk. And um, when we did that, we um, uh, we called it with the right size. Um, so basically, this is um, you know, if I have, if I you know, wanted you to remember, um, like you know, kind of three important um, things 
from this talk. I would say their uh, name, umox, spec umox, use um, return value. Um, to, to check regular conditions, use a side effect uh, to check um, various um, corner cases and use cold. Uh, and if you want to kind of verify that you got like the actual argument you expect. Um, call args um, to actually um, check that uh, you, your functions were called and your methods were called with the right arguments. Um, so that's it. That Those are like um, five things that I see a lot of people don't do enough when they do mocks. Um, so I would encourage you uh, to do these things um, a lot more when you uh, when you use mocks in Python um, because they don't take much more effort and they will make your tests uh, a lot better. Um, so that's it. That's like the um, few mocking patterns that I want to show you today. Um, thank you all for listening and I will be on the Discord uh, to answer any more questions you might have.